TSIN is pleased to work with Terrapin as a partner in the Reach the Mall program. This learning session will support you in the integration of computer science and computational thinking into your classrooms and curriculum. Good morning or good afternoon. My name is Bill Glass. I am president of Terrapin and I'm joined today by Luis Noriega, our sales manager. Luis, you want to wave? Hey, my name is Luis Noriega. <laughs> and we are from Terrapin. Terrapin is pleased to be part of the Reach the Mall project. And we are providing a kit with three robots for the project. These are robots targeted at younger grades from kindergarten to third or fourth grade, although they can maybe go a little bit higher. Uh, our, our robots tend to be very motivational for the kids, easy for teachers to use, and great learning devices. So we're going to use this opportunity to give you an overview and show them to you. The first robot is the Bebot. The Bebot is a yellow and black B robot, and it is controlled by pushing the buttons on the back. It had the kids are super motivated to use it. It's targeted uh, from kindergarten to second grade, and the Bebot can go forward and back and turn left and right. So Luis is going to give you a little demo of how the Bebot works. So we have a setup for Bebot here, which illustrates that you can use Bebot, which is highly motivational, to teach any number of lessons. And we have a setup to teach about the solar system. So Bebot is going to start on Earth. Luis, can you take Bebot to the Earth? So as I said, there are four buttons. You want to show us the buttons, Luis? Uh, the forward, the back, the left, and the right. The X button clears Bebot's memory. And the two little lines on the other side are a pause. So we're here on Earth. And we're going to see if we can get Bebot to Mars. So Luis, if you want to clear the memory. You might show before we start, you want to show the, the switches underneath. Bebot does turn off and on, and it has a, uh, three switches on the bottom, so you want to turn all of those on. And one's for sound, one's for power, and one's for their sensors. So we'll start Bebot on Earth. And to get to Mars, we could go different ways, but why don't we go forward? and then left. So we have to go forward one, we have to turn left, and we have to go forward, get to Mars, two, two more steps. So we put a program in Bebot, and to test it out, we press go. So the students will press go to try their program. So we went forward one, we went left one, and turn and forward too. So now we made it to Mars. Congratulations. So from Mars, maybe we want to go to Saturn and avoid the asteroids. So to go on to Saturn, what would we have to do? First, you have to turn towards Saturn, which is turning left. And then how many steps do we go forward? Let's see. One, two steps. Let's try that, Luis. Now, you have to look at Bebot is, is facing one direction, but forward is a different direction because we're turning. So it helps students understand directionality as well as their left and their right. And since we didn't erase the program, we'll go back to Earth to start. So if you remember, we had the program to take us to Mars, and then we added a program to go from Mars to Saturn. So we'll see if we can make it. So if you want to, if we press go, Bebot will follow the steps.
So there we are, we made it all the way to Saturn. So this is an illustration of programming Bebot, as well as using it to teach a lesson you may already be teaching. Um, the motivation that Bebot gives to the students is a really good thing that helps them remember their, the lesson. And we have a variety of materials that help you to use the Bebot. The mat that Bebot is running on is called a card mat. It's a six by six grid um, designed for Bebot steps. It has a clear plastic cover. So you can put whatever illustrations you would like on it and teach the lesson that you would like. Uh, in addition to that, a very convenient thing is the, uh, so this is teaching about the solar system. You can let the students, it's, it gives them an opportunity to be creative. They can develop a plan to go from one planet to another, uh, different ways like the closer or the farther. Uh, they can avoid the asteroids and you can teach about the solar system. And Luis, if you want to show us the alphabet cards and the CVC word cards. These are cards that are convenient to use with the card mat um, that has the alphabet on it or CVC words, consonant vowel, consonant words. Those can be uh, put on the card mat, create an alphabet mat, uh, you, and um, teach the kids the alphabet, the CVC words. You can use either the illustration or the word or both. And these are give you some um, pre-printed things to use on the card mat, but you can also use illustrations that you would like. I was once at a school and it happened to be Valentine's Day and the teacher had put each kid's picture on the card mat and they had to choose their Valentine with Bebot and you never saw six-year-old so serious. They were planning their program and walking it through before they pressed go. It was high stakes programming for first graders. Uh, the other type of card we had are the command cards. The command cards show each command on the Bebot, and this helps make the coding a social activity. One student can lay out the cards while another student pushes the buttons, and you can keep a record of the program. Uh, maybe the kids aren't that good at writing quite yet, so you can use the cards to record the program. They inevitably say, Bebot didn't do what I told it. and if they have a record of what they told it, they will discover that Bebot did what they told it, but maybe not what they wanted to do. So they can change the program as Luis is showing us and then enter the program again to see if they accomplish what they actually meant to do. So this gives you a very rich environment uh, to use with uh, Bebot and the Bebot motivation uh, really makes the students enthusiastic about learning and you can use it to teach a wide variety of lessons and they pick up coding uh, as part of the lesson. It becomes second nature to them, which is the uh, idea behind it. So we showed you the uh, command cards, which list each of the VBOT commands that the students can lay out to record their programs. There are alphabet cards and CVC word cards, so you can create, uh, use the card mat to create alphabet and CVC mats. We also have a number of pre-printed mats that are made of vinyl, um, quite durable vinyl. Uh, the, these can be uh, used for different purposes. We have um, jackets for the bees. There's a pen holder jacket that can carry a pen and let it draw. There's the pusher jacket that you can use to push small objects around, such as ping pong balls or cotton balls or Hershey's Kisses. And then we have the designer jackets that students can create their own characters or their own designs. Bebot can be the character in a story they're reading. And um, if you put down illustrations from the story, 
Bebot's a great way to teach sequencing and what happens first and what happens next, and they can uh, show the character. So after Bebot, in your kit, you will find another robot called Bluebot. Bluebot is very similar to Bebot. It looks like this, except that instead of black and yellow, Bluebot is clear. And the difference between Bluebot and Bebot is a Bluetooth connection. So Bluebot is clear so the Bluetooth can go through it. And you can control it with another device as well as the buttons on the back. If you use the buttons, Bluebot works just like Bebot. And you use the, pro the buttons to program forward, back, left, and right. If you use another device, a tablet or a computer, uh, you can control it remotely. So Luis is going to show us Bluebot in action. And we have Bluebot on our community mat. This is an example of a mat that is pre-printed and it has a community on it so that the students can uh, learn about their community. This shows that you can use Bebot and Bluebot to teach social studies or language skills. They can write stories and use the Bebot or Bluebot to illustrate the stories. All the mats are interchangeable with Bebot and Bluebot because they're both the same size in this, uh, the same dimensions and they move in the same uh, way. So we're going to show Bluebot on the community mat. And why don't, Luis, why don't we send Bluebot to school? Just like the kids. So the school is up ahead on the left. So if we send Bluebot to school, I think we first have to turn Bluebot on. Is that right? Nope, looks like Blue, Bluebot's turned on already. Okay. We'll clear the program. And what do we have to do to get to school? So we go one forward, one, two, three. Then we have to turn left. And you'll note that turning is different than moving. So we turn left. And then we go forward one more to get to school. So let's test out our program by pressing go. Forward two, forward three, turn left, and we made it to school. We also offer a school mat if the students want to learn their way around school and sequence their school activities. That's another one of our narrative mats. Um, and we offer a country road mat and uh, an old west mat that teaches mapping skills. But as I said about Bluebot, the difference between Bebot and Bluebot is that Bluebot can be controlled from another device. And that includes tablets, computers, and a, a device called the tactile reader. So Luis is going to show us the tactile reader, which is designed specifically for Bluebot and is a device that is very hands-on. It's an easy transition from the buttons. So you put the little tiles each of which has a blue bot command on it. And you, instead of pushing the buttons to write your program, you line up the tiles to write your program. It's very similar to the command cards. So uh, Luis has a program set out, forward, right. Let's see, you wanna show us your program, Luis? Yes. So I have a program. Forward, right, forward, forward, left, forward, right, forward, forward. I don't think that's where we want to go, is it? Yeah, um, I'm planning to go to the pizza place. <laughs> okay, so that's more fun than going to school. So <laughs> we're going to control Bluebot and send it to pizza. So if we start at the same place, let's check out the program. 
Where do you want to start? Okay, the first thing you have to do is connect the tactile reader to the blue bot. And you do that by pressing the blue button on the tactile reader. When it connects, the blue bot's eyes turn blue. When its eyes are blue, the buttons no longer work. So if Luis presses the buttons, nothing will happen. Because once you set up the remote control, you control Bluebot remotely. So to get to the pizza parlor, let's see, we want to go forward, right, forward, forward, left, forward, right. That's going to take us to the corner market, isn't it? Oh yes, yes. I have to I have to debug my program. So, so it should be should be forward, right, forward, forward, left, and then I need to correct my program. It should have another forward here. So I'm going to switch this, then forward, forward, and this also I need to correct because I need to turn right to enter to the pizza place. And then I can can enter to the pizza place. Yes. Thank you, Bill. Okay, so student, this is very good practice for the students. They look where they want to go. They put down uh, their program, enter their program, either on the, with the buttons on the B-Bot or the unconnected blue bot or in the remote device. If the blue bot is connected remotely and if they do have it remote, instead of pressing go on the blue bot, you press the green go on the tactile reader. So we'll see if Luis has written the program, and if he's going to get his pizza for lunch. So you see it lights up each step as it goes. So now we went forward, we turned right, and you see the red light indicates each step as the blue bot executes it. Now we're turning left, forward, forward, right, forward. Oh, we're in the pizza parlor. Luis, do you want mushroom or pepperoni? Oh, pepperoni, of course. <laughs> pepperoni, okay. So you can see this map can be used to teach about the community as well as to teach about coding. And then the remote control uh, gives you, uh, lets the kids understand the concept of controlling something from a different device. Another concept that can be introduced, which Luis showed you at the beginning, is the idea of editing your program. With Bbot, if it doesn't do what you want, you have to delete the program and enter another one. But if you're using a remote device on Bluebot, you can change the tiles around to fix your program. So this introduces the concept of editing. So, and that can be carried over also to tablets or PCs. Great. We do have a, some, I'll show you some of the accessories for Bluebot. We offer programs for PCs, uh, Android and Android tablets and iPads, as well as the tactile reader. The tactile reader has additional um, uh, advanced um, tiles that you can introduce repeating. And you can do that if you control Bluebot with another device. It has the capability to repeat commands. And it also has the capability to turn 45 degrees. So far, we have talked about turns, but it's Bluebot is a good way to introduce the idea of measuring turns and that uh, turns and movement are two different measurement systems. So if you use a remote device, including the tactile reader, you can have Bluebot turn 45 degrees instead of 90 degrees. There's also a case that you can use to store both Bbots and Bluebots. And there are sensors that you can record a message so that when either Bbot or Bluebot comes to the sensor, 
the message will play. And that adds another dimension to um, kids programming so that if they get their robot to the sensor, they'll get the pre-recorded message. Uh, for example, great job, you've completed your mission as it shows in that illustration. So it's uh, the B-bots and Bluebots are a rich environment. Um, as we said, it's the same form factor, the same distances. So all of the mats and the other accessories are interchangeable and as is the case. Um, and Terrapin is offering you uh, as part of the Reach Them All project, a discount on all the accessories for the robots. And the third robot in the kit is the most advanced one, and that is Probot. Probot looks like a car, but it's actually quite a sophisticated car. It can, it has the arrows just like the bee or the blue bot and can be uh, controlled forward, back, left, and right. In addition to the arrow keys, it has a numeric keypad, which gives it a lot more possibilities. So Luis, are you ready to show us the robot? Yes, let's share my screen. So here's Probot. Uh, one big advantage of Probot is that you can put a pin in it. It can draw as it goes. So Probot works in Bebot mode if you just use the arrow keys. So Luis, why don't we try and draw a square with the arrow keys? So we'll go forward. It can go forward, back, left, and right, just like Bebot and Bluebot. I think you'll need to turn it on. Is it on? Okay, the switches are underneath. Let me let me clear the program I had before. Okay. Okay. Now I'm ready. And then we'll show Bebot mode, which is just using the arrow keys. So to create a square, what do we need to do? We need to go forward and turn right or left. And we have to do that four times. So we can go forward. We don't want to give it, we just want to use Bebop mode. No okay. numbers. Okay, I will delete. Okay. So we'll go forward and let's go right. Forward and right. And we have to do that four times. Forward and right. Okay. Now, why don't you position in the position it on the bottom left? Or when you use the arrow keys, Bebot moves in steps of it. Or excuse me, Probot moves in steps of its length and turns ninety degrees, just like Bebot or Bluebot. So if we press go. Robot's moving its body length and turning 90 degrees. And we went forward and turned right four times. And you see it's drawing as it goes. A little bit of drag on that mat. This is a dry erase mat. So Probot drew a square. And this is super motivating for students. And Luis, do you have an a, a eraser there? Sure. You could erase this square. And then you can introduce students to a different way of drawing a square. If we clear the program. So another capability and a new coding feature that Probot offers is repeating. So it was pretty tedious to tell it to go forward and turn right, go forward and turn right, go forward and turn right. With Probot, 
we were doing the same thing four times. So a different way to do it would be to repeat. And you see the repeat button. Four times. Forward. So the forward arrow. And then right. And then we have to tell it when to stop repeating. So we uh, click the right bracket. So our program can, you want to show us the program? We're repeating four times forward and right. Now let's see what happens if we press go now. Oh, Probot drew a square again, but we had a much more efficient program because we had it repeat instead of having to do all that typing. So this gives you a lot of possibilities. It gives you a lot of opportunities for a longer program so students can be more creative and can uh, use multiple repeats um repeats within repeats and that gives them a lot of uh, possibilities while the drawing is a real motivator for them then the other thing probot can do not only does it have arrow keys it has a numeric keypad if you enter numbers after the arrows you can tell it how many steps to move and how many degrees to turn so this gives you the opportunity to uh, introduce students to measuring turns and to the concept of degrees and angles. So let's try Probot with uh, turning more or, or fewer than 90 degrees. Luis, you wanna, uh, why don't we say forward? When you enter the number of steps, Probot moves in uh, centimeters, not its body length. So a decent move would be, say, 25 steps. So why don't we go forward 25? We'll erase the old program. And one nice feature of Probot is that you see your program on the little screen. And you may not have noticed, but as you go through the program, Probot highlights each line that you're on. So you can see where you are in the program as it executes it. So why don't we go forward 25? So you see it's written there, FD 25. And let's go right 45. And let's go forward again 25. So we're going forward, we're turning right, this time 45 degrees instead of 90, and then we're going to go forward 25 again. You want to press go and see what that does? So you see, instead of turning 90 degrees, we only turn 45. Students can use their protractor and measure that and try and, and it's a great motivating way to learn about angles and degrees. Also, they can use uh, <clears throat> their rulers and measure how far they want it to go and tell it that. Probot can remember up to 99 lines of code, so the programs can get fairly complex. So let's try the two, combining the two capabilities or repeating and uh, turning uh, the angle we specify. You want to erase the program? Let's, can we draw a pentagon? So 
So let's think about a pentagon and how we might use ProBot to draw it. We would have to have five sides. So the first thing we want to do is we know there's got to be a five involved. And the next question is, how, what's the angle involved in a pentagon? Well, if we're going to close the shape, robot has to travel 360 degrees. It's going to do that in five steps. 360 divided by five is 72. Now, we don't want to type in all that movement. So if we just repeat the same thing five times, let's see what happens. So if we repeat five, And we're going to go forward. Let's go forward 20, maybe. Maybe 15. Forward 15. And then right I, 72. I have to start all over again. OK. I didn't move uh, to the top of the program. So I need to clear the program and start all over again. Okay. Let me do that. OK, I'm ready now. We'll start with repeat. So let's, we're going to do a pentagon. So that means we need five sides. Let's repeat five. Okay. Go forward, say 15. And we have to figure out the angle. So to complete a pentagon, Probot has to do come all the way around. All the way around is 360 degrees. So if we're going to do it in five steps, 360 divided by 5 is 72. So let's turn right 72. Then we want to close our repeat loop. OK, and let's, let's look at the program. So we're repeating 5, forward 15, right 72. So. When you get ProBot positioned, you can press go and we'll see what happens. As I said, this is a great way to teach kids about shapes, angles, and geometry and very motivating. So before we do a square, which we can do in Bebop mode, but now that we're using the numeric keypad, you see, we got a nice pentagon. And you can combine those capabilities and students can get very creative. And I'm gonna show you an example. And here's an example of Probot drawing a quite a complex shape. But when you break it into little parts and you repeat, then it's fairly easy to do. And the students feel very accomplished when they get it done. Uh, we do offer dry erase maps. So that lets you erase and try over till you get exactly what, what you want. So in addition, Probot has a number of more advanced features. You can create sub-programs that the main program calls. Um, as I said, the main program has a limit of 99 lines, but if you use sub-programs, you have uh, no real capacity limit. Uh, the bumpers are touch sensors, so you can program it to respond to running into things. It also has a sound sensor and a light sensor. You can program it to turn its lights on when it gets dark, so you can create a tunnel and run ProBot through and have it turn its lights on when it's in the tunnel. And they will turn off when it comes out if the programming is done correctly. So that uh, teaches students a lot more examples of coding. That's a program interrupt, um, measurement, and angles. And it's a, a fairly complex uh, device. If you easy to start with, but it opens up and there's many more features as you go. So ProBot, if we started in third grade, which is when most students start learning their angles, can carry through to fourth and fifth and even beyond. 
There are also some ProBot accessories. Uh, those include the um, a ProBot mat, which has some complex uh, roads on it and some other accessories. Luis, we've shown all three robots. Is that right? Yes. Yes, Bill. Maybe maybe you want to show the emulator. Yes. So Luis is bringing up the emulator. Not only do you get in your kits, do you get the robots themselves, but we have emulators for each of the robots online, so that you can students can. If you don't have enough robots for all the kids, they can practice and try out online. So the first thing I'm going to show is the Bebot emulator. So the Bebot emulator has a feature. You can use any of the mats we offer. For example, we showed you the community mat. And I'm going to show a new one. Let's try the alphabet mat. So you can program Bebot to go. Let's see if we can get Bebot to go to T for Tennessee. So the simplest way, I'm going to send it back, turn right, and go forward, and go. Whoops. That's not right. So what did I, I turn right. I need to turn left. So let's try it again. You press the X key. We'll just go backwards from here. Two. The sound uh, turn on, Bill. Good idea. So I'm going to share the sound. You get all the step, uh, the sounds of Bebot. So we'll go home, try it again. To get to our T, we're going to go back. And I got to think about this. You'll see the students twisting and turning as they think about their left and their right. So I have to turn left this time and then go forward. So see if I can get to T. Whoops. So I made another mistake. I didn't clear my program first. I'm having a tough time. Luis, I should leave the programming to you. <laughs> so this is an example. With the emulator, you can uh, let the students practice. You can, uh, they can do it from home. Um, so we still haven't gotten to the T, so I'm going to turn right and go forward. Part of the problem is I grew up in Kentucky, so I have a hard time with Tennessee. <laughs> Those are rival states. <laughs> there we go. So now we're there and you can see we have a whole variety of mats. Any of these mats are available in vinyl. Um, we have the skills mats where you teach particular things. This is US coins, shapes, colors, and size. And then we have the narrative mats. We showed you the community mat. We have the country road mat. We have the um, Old West map, which has um, uh, can has interesting things for kids, and it, you can teach them how to read a map and so forth. In addition to the Bebot emulator, we have a Bluebot emulator. And that uh, is similar to the Bebot emulator with all the mats. It all allows you to uh, do the 45 degrees and have repeat loops. And in addition, if you're using the Chrome browser, which supports Bluetooth, if you click this button, you can connect it to Bluebot and actually control the Bluebot from the end. So this is another option for you. And then we have a ProBot emulator, which allows you to program ProBot. This is the root map that I was telling you. It's a challenge for the kids. Can they get ProBot to go in a circle? Um, so you, you can um, program ProBot in the emulator, just like Luis showed us on the bot. You could choose a. Uh, a, a dry erase mat if you want to draw. You put the pen down and we go forward and you see it can draw. Um, so the students can do this online. In addition, as part of the Reach Them All package from Terrapin, 
You have BBOT lessons, which cover BBOT and BlueBot, and you have ProBot lessons. These are lesson ideas. That's an online um, system, and it's completely integrated with the emulator. So each of the lessons can be taught in class and with the emulator. So you're getting a lot of options, uh, a lot of um, resources, and we believe your students will be highly motivated and love it and learn a whole lot as they go.